Welcome to the OC, bitches. Welcome to the OC, bitches. What? <laughs> I don't know. I always try and put on some weird voice, but it doesn't always you work. You got a little like, uh, what's the word from like old timey? Oh, no. I'm like Harry, Carrie, Carrie. What? Welcome. To, anyway. Welcome to the OC, <laughs> bitches. Sorry. <laughs> She's drunk now, everyone. She's <laughs> right. drunk. Take me out to the ball game. Season three, episode two, The Shape of Things to Come. And everyone, we have such a special guest today. (laughs) She is the uber accomplished actor, producer, and director, right? Autumn Reeser. Woo! Born in La Jolla, California. She moved to LA after high school and enrolled in UCLA's competitive theater program. She's known for her roles on Entourage, No Ordinary Family, The Arrangement, Hawaii Five O. Ness and necessary roughness. And once again, her resume just goes on and on and on and on. Just look <laughs> it up. Recently, she has acted in and produced multiple successful Hall- Hallmark movies and probably, honestly, the best casting decision the OC has ever made in season three. We got her as Taylor Townsend. So welcome, Autumn. <laughs> Yay. Yay! I'm so glad to be here and see you both again. <laughs> I mean, kind of to see you, Rachel. I know. Virtual hugs. I know. On a screen, virtual hugs. Yes, I am on a screen today, everyone. But Autumn, I was so happy you were coming in. You know, Autumn came and worked on Heart of Dixie with me. Was it just an episode? I couldn't remember. Yeah, just one. I think it was like the final episode or something something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. There's a picture of us and I'm like super pregnant. So it was definitely towards yes. the end. But <laughs> I know. Autumn is just the best. And we are so happy you're here. And it was I was so happy to watch you as Taylor Townsend once again. Uh, not Well, for the first time, probably, but just remembering even working with you as Taylor Townsend. I had so much fun reliving it, and I just mm. love you in this character. So much fun. It was so fun to watch it again. I was like, it was, I mean, it was surreal. It was surreal. I haven't seen it in, in I mean, I don't think I've watched it since it, I know I didn't watch it since it aired. Right. So, wow. Yeah. It was, I mean, there were so many things. I was like, oh, that's right. Jerry Ryan was on in this. Is she Kirsten's sister? No. Like, I just <laughs> didn't, I didn't even know. I was, it was like, it's a brand new show. And now I wish, I, I might have to go back and start it from the beginning. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. When you watch it from the perspective of, you know, I'm not just watching my scenes. <laughs> when you watch it from a perspective <laughs> of just a viewer, and my new trick is to watch it with subtitles so you can see every little thing that Seth says. Because there's so many little things you miss because yes. people, because we talk fast. There's yeah, every I once ha- in a while it's very Gilmore girls. Yeah. And I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Put the subtitles on. Yeah. Also, you're so good. You're just so like when you look down your nose at people and you're just <laughs> sassy and your cat eyes, you toss your hair. So delicious. Oh my gosh. We we have a lot of fun. And I mean, yes, it's it's I don't know. There's something so warm and comforting and nostalgic and the thing that we're exploring on this podcast, like why it resonated. And and, I mean, it was obviously we were having some great ratings and such, but we're just discovering how how special it is to, Mm -hmm. to audiences now. And and such a wonderful reception that we're having now. And yeah. people are going to love that you're here. And and I just warned her that she, this isn't the only time that she's coming because Taylor yeah. Taylor was really just such a standout character. And so, I mean, do you remember how you got the role? Did you audition? Was there a long yeah. monologue? Because they gave you a lot of yes. words. Yeah, a lot of words. <laughs> That's, I think that might be like my signature as an actor. Like, here's a bunch of exposition. Give it to Autumn Reeser yeah. to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I was auditioning a lot at this point. I'd been, I'd been at theater school. Um, Wait, by the way, the, um, the UCLA Competitive Theater Program, that sounds like something Taylor would do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, but yes, very much. I was not the valedictorian of UCLA's competitive theater program. Um, no, I think they were, I think this, I think the blurb was just like, it's competitive. It was because it's competitive to get into. I don't, right, I don't right, think right. we weren't no, actually I competing. I had to put that in there because, I mean, my, I know people have gone, my dad went to UCLA theater school, but I mean, I was like, I was going to ask him like, is there a difference between the theater school and the competitive theater or it's just no. you have to audition to get no, in? No, I think that's just what they meant by it. There was no competing against anyone other yeah. than ourselves. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so I had been at, uh, I was actually in their first musical theater program. So I was there for, I was there for a couple of years and then I had started auditioning. I was interning at a casting agency because I knew nothing about the film and television industry. I didn't 
grow up with anybody like in this. I had moved to LA to go to theater school. It was the only school I applied to. Mm. I got so lucky. Los Angeles was completely overwhelming to me. I didn't have a car for a while. Eventually, I my grandma got rid of her car, so I got my grandma's car. <sighs> and I had booked a couple of things, left theater school. I would drive my grandma's car up and over Laurel Canyon to go to auditions. Uh, we had the Thomas <laughs> Brothers Guide, right? Yeah, so we didn't, wow. Yes, and like our black and white headshots. And you'll never, ever get lost in LA again knowing that Thomas Guide. <laughs> That's true. I really did learn Kids how to get around GPS, the city. They get lost. <laughs> it's, I mean, oh, it's yeah. <laughs> I, I know it now because the Thomas Brothers Guide. Um, so I was in that phase of my career of just, I had done like CSI and like those type of procedural things, like a guest star where I get murdered, like that sort of thing. <laughs> and I'd done some sitcom work. And, um, and so I was just in, I was auditioning a lot. And Taylor... I think she was only supposed to be a four-episode arc. And I got the audition. It was one of those characters that, I call them back pocket characters, that you're just like, I know this one. I know this. Mm -hmm. I know who this is, like in my, in my bones. And I just had so much fun putting together my audition. And I added a couple little things, which I, I just felt very free with her. And I didn't know if they were going to like that or if they were going to be like, you're off script. <sighs> um but I felt really comfortable with it. And then... Was the audition one of the scenes from this it episode? It was the two, the two real talky yeah. scenes with me and, with me and uh, Rachel. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I... So I was really comfortable with those. And then I booked it. And then I freaked out because I was like, this is too big a platform. I'm not ready. I went into like <gasps> full imposter syndrome. Aww. I think I was like 24, you know? And um, it just... The, the show was such a big success. And you guys were like, you and Misha were like the most famous girls. And I was really, <gasps> really nervous. I was really nervous. Um, once I get to set there, I feel in my element and always have. Like once I'm actually acting, I'm there's no problem there. But it's the like driving to set and the sitting in hair and makeup. And <laughs> like I was really, really nervous. Yeah. Wow. You couldn't tell. I always remember like thinking of your character though as kind of like Tracy Flick from Election. Yes. And I yeah. And I don't know if that was you that said that and took that on or if Josh had mentioned it, but I remember that was always kind of like the... I remember you saying that in some interview that you did and you were so cute. Oh. You, talk, you talked me up in, I don't know, like Us Weekly or something. And you said something <laughs> nice about me and you compared me to Tracy Flick. And I, it was a, it was a, st I still remember it this many years later. It was really <laughs> wow. kind. Oh, that's so cool. Do you remember that first day on set? Or you <sighs> just described it? Yeah, I mean, okay. I think the first scene we shot was was the first time we see Taylor. Mm. I think I think that was the first scene that I that I shot with that big monologue, um, which I, I I noticed I do a little. I don't want to leave the podium, and I like that slow do a little, retreat. <laughs> I was like, yeah. just gonna write one more thing here. <laughs> I was like, that's a good choice. Good job, me. Um, <laughs> the carnival scene, though, I have no memory of zero. I do not remember wow. shooting it. I don't remember that happened. N nothing. It's so crazy. You know, we do that all the time and watching, rewatching. It's so long ago, you know, it's like, yeah, it's hard to retain all of that, especially like with how much you've worked since then, you know, it's just, yeah, it's back there somewhere. And I'm sure as you keep watching, cause you'll be back for more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. Just, you better it'll start your memory. You better start from the I'm, beginning. I'm good at watching. <laughs> well, I'm like, I wonder if I can, I don't think my kids are like quite big enough yet. Oh, how old are they now? They're, my Finn just turned 11 and then Dash is, Dash is eight. So definitely, definitely, I think not, not quite old enough yet. <laughs> they'd, probably, yet. they'd probably just be like, mama, this is so boring. I, <laughs> I show them, I show them my uh, Hallmark stuff every now and then. And they're like, there's no explosions. <laughs> Why do I want to watch this? Yeah, wait until high school. So do you, you you asked me about CG, my daughter, yeah. and I posted on Instagram recently. I found the picture of your papillon Aww. and CG in the makeup Aww, trailer. Gatsby. What was her name? Gatsby. Oh Gatsby. my gosh, you remember that? Yes. yes. So, I, so I remember dogs. <laughs> yeah. So we we the papillon with the but which papillon means butterfly with the with the yes. ears yes. and CG did the did the hair just like that. Yeah, and Corey did her hair, right? Oh. Wasn't it was uh, wasn't it Corey yeah, doing hair? Probably. Corey or Joni? Or Corey did makeup. But... Oh, Corey did makeup. That's right. Troy, yeah. Troy, <gasps> Troy was doing make hair. Troy's Estes, hair. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was right. here. He oh, was my... here with Cindy. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, wow. so, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs>
we so many dog. memories. Well, I wanted to ask before we get into the episode. So um, I listened to you on the Victory podcast oh, with yes. Doug, Doug Ellen yeah, and the yeah, guys, yeah. and I was hearing uh, you. You were explaining your relationship with Hallmark. Congratulations on something that was Thank you. like something you. It, it happened and like, yeah. are you directing and producing? Um, I'm not directing for okay. them, but I'm executive producing now um, as of about a year ago, which has been really like a new venture. I feel really satisfied with it. I have another couple uh, jobs I'm producing, a couple movies with them in production or in development. And it's just been a, it's been a really fun evolution over there. Um, yeah, I did my first movie with them 10 years ago yeah. because it had this really fun kind of 1940s banter, um, that I really loved. And it, and then it just kept going because I had had my first son and they were so supportive to a young mother of just like, yeah, we'll fly your mom. So you have somebody to help take care of your kid and, uh, we'll give you a crib and we'll give you an extra room in your hotel. And that was, I really, really needed that at that point in my career to, to have that type of support. And they offered it to me. And also I love telling love stories. I love mm. it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we talk, we, that's one of the themes that Rachel and I, and Kelly Rowan and, and, um, Jamie King, we just, anytime we get a mother on here, we discuss, what oh, it's yeah. like being a mother and doing what we do for a living and to hear that yeah. pe- that this industry can be accommodating is very rare. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I remember I was on a series was with, before I started working, right around the same time I was on a series and I had Finn and I was still nursing and couldn't get to him all day and I was... Sh- this is going to be embarrassing. I was shooting a love scene and I needed to, I needed to go pump. And I, they were like, well, you just got to wait until the sun, this <laughs> scene is done. And I was like, I think that's a bad idea. That's really not how <laughs> female bodies work. <laughs> I really think it needs to, I just need to go and then I'll just come back. But you know, you're, you're, t- everything's, you're on a time schedule and the time is so tight and motherhood is a, a separate rhythm. Mm-hmm. And so trying yeah. to, trying to merge those two together is, um, is quite a challenge. And I think, I think it's improving. I think we've, we've seen improvements within that area in the last like five years. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, that was, that was challenging for sure. 10 years ago. Summer is my favorite time of year. (laughs) Wink, wink. (laughs) I love getting together with friends and firing up the grill. Butcher Box is my absolute favorite. It's a subscription service that allows me to choose from a curated selection of hundred percent grass fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. I get so excited when my box shows up. I'm a huge lover of red meat, I have to admit. And when I fire up the grill, which, yes, I know how to use, a (laughs) barbecutionist, as Seth might say, um, the steaks are so delicious. I can't wait to make a filet tonight. Every month, ButcherBox ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to your home. You can customize your own box or go with one of theirs. Butcher Box is packed fresh with absolutely no antibiotics or added hormones and shipped frozen for convenience. So you can save time on your next grocery store trip. And one of the best parts is free shipping for the continental US and it's less than $6 per meal on average. It is barbecue weather. We did a little barbecue over Memorial Day, some salmon and ribeye, the old surf and turf. We added some grilled veggies and everything was delish. And in fact, it was so good, Um, Adam... The, hub, the hubby, he asked for it this weekend again. So we're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Get summer sizzling started with this special butcher box deal for our listeners. Free bacon for life of your membership plus $10 off. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash the OC and use code the OC to get one pack of free bacon in every box for the life of your membership, plus $10 off your first order. That's butcherbox.com slash the OC and use code the OC to claim this deal. Olipop, it's a new kind of soda. It tastes just like the sodas I grew up with, but unlike other sodas that are full of sugar, corn syrup, and artificial ingredients, Olipop is made with natural ingredients that are actually good for you. Olipop has delicious nostalgic flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, strawberry vanilla, and their newest flavor, classic grape. I love the orange squeeze. It reminds me of a kid growing up, going through a drive-thru, and that was always my drink. 
but I cannot believe that it only has two to five grams of sugar from natural sources. Olipop uses functional ingredients that combine the benefits of probiotics, plant fiber, and botanicals to support your microbiome and benefit digestive health. All of their products are non-GMO, vegan, paleo, and keto-friendly with less than eight net carbs per can. Okay, nine of those carbs, if you look at the label, which I did, they come from fiber, okay? You know, it's soluble fiber, but it's like, I'm big on fiber. And how they got it into a delicious soda, it's, anyway, it's yummy. I love it. I love the classic root beer. Olipop is so confident that you will love their product that they offer 100% money-back guarantees for orders placed through their website. Go to drinkolipop.com slash the OC to receive 20% off plus free shipping on your order or use code the OC at checkout to claim this deal. I recommend trying their variety pack. It's a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. That's D-R-I-N-K-O-L-I-P-O-P dot com slash the OC. Olipop can also be found in over 8,000 stores across the country, including Kroger, Target, Whole Foods, Sprouts, and Wegmans. How, how old's your daughter now? She's seven. I know. It's, it goes so fast. I yeah. mean, I can't believe how old your boys are. I know. I like but this. Yeah. I like this age, though. It's so nice. They're full little people and we have such interesting conversations and it's a lot easier yeah <laughs> in some ways <laughs> yeah 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 I I prefer I prefer this I found the you know I think I think a lot of people love the the infant stage I found it I found that more challenging yeah yeah, yeah for sure you know but you're saying like, you were working while you were still breastfeeding and everything and we talk about this stuff and luckily for me I ended the last series uh before I had her and uh, it ended right before I gave birth to her. So I had that time. Yeah. And now that I did that, I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't know how you do it, you know? Like it's, it's, it's like, I think that's the biggest challenge. I had Finn on 24 planes with me before he turned one. Wow. Wow. Because yeah. I was traveling so, so much and Back working. Back to Toronto? Was I was it? all over the place Just, at that point. I think I was guest starring um, on a, on a show in New York too, and I was up in Vancouver. Um, I, I don't. I was. I was. Did you travel uh, with? Did you? You have to have somebody on set if you're if it's with a if you're nursing. Yeah, I mean, so you, it a was mom or a nanny. Their dad at the, his dad came mm. for some of them, and my mom came for some of them, and yeah. um, I didn't have I didn't have professional childcare at that at that point. I don't right now either, but. He, but it was, yeah, it was really, it was really challenging. Yeah. And um, oh. yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot. God, we're all <sighs> like, oh, God. Anyway. We're all like, oh. <laughs> I've already told the story. I try not to repeat, but the, I, the one day when she was only eight weeks old, I went on set and it was the one day that I pumped and didn't allow her to breastfeed. And she oh. never took a bottle again. She was like, uh-uh. I, no. she totally <laughs> recognized that the bottle meant mom's gone. So she never, Aww. yeah. So she went the, from that to a sippy cup. How old was she when you when we were doing this show? She was three. Oh. So she's the same year as every. She was born in two thousand. So two thousand three seven when it ended. Yeah. Wow. But but it was like we said, it was a perfect job for me because it was L A. Yeah. I was going to work three times a week, sometimes yeah. more. But she was, you know, she was already in preschool. Yeah. So it was it was totally doable. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It okay. was it was a great job. For me, good <laughs> and a mom, good. But no, not number one on the call sheet. I wasn't doing the same long hours that that all the kids were, because when we get we get people in here, and my, I don't remember, you know, Cindy was explaining our makeup art artist. You know, she's being a crew member. You're there every single day, yeah. and talking about the extremely long hours. Yeah. And I just didn't have that same schedule. So you're, you know, everyone has a different, completely different experience. Yeah. Even on the best of shows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were so lucky. I'm so glad you had that experience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, let's get into this episode because it's, it's, you know, last episode, we were, it was the aftermath of Trey and Trey leaving. And, and in this episode, we have so many villains because yeah. we were discussing the fact that in season yeah. three, the, the Fox the heads of Fox and they wanted more dramatic storyline of it with adults. And um, they brought on Charlotte and they brought the Dean in and you've got Taylor and you've got Don, the, I don't know, the the yacht guy, the 
the loan the shark. The guy that ev- every time Tate sits down, he goes, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like classic. Yeah. classic. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, every, you know, it's there's been some criticism. And Josh said that everything the show mocked, it kind of became. But I, I, I'm, I'm here for it. I like it. I liked what was going on. So there was just a lot of melodrama. But um, so in the synopsis. Oh, synopsis. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten is worried about leaving rehab and decides to move in with Charlotte instead, which surprises Sandy and me, I have to be honest. The new Dina Harbor School wants to expel Marissa and Ryan for shooting Trey. I don't mean to laugh, but like just reading this just sounds, which leaves Julie <laughs> scheming on ways to keep Marissa in. Summer tries to take on social chair and is having difficulty due to Taylor Townsend. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jimmy meets with his loan shark and we see just how bad his money problems are. Directed by Tony Warmby. Written by J.J. Philbin. Original air date, oh September 15th, 2005. Yes. So. There we go. <laughs> the Tony Wombi. Do you remember Tony? Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. I just, I, I had a full download of what he looked like the second you did his <laughs> accent. So well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> we love our Tony. Tony. Love our Tony. But yeah, oh there's so gosh. much going on in this episode. But just mainly introducing, obviously, you, Taylor Townsend, and Eric Mabius as the new dean. Who's very uh, hot as a dean. When he enters, like, you know, when I was on the show, we were so young and he was older than us. And now from this perspective, I'm like, he's so young and he's so hot. Well, we, we, we do a lot of um, <laughs> recognizing how hot Ben is. He's very, very, it's very attractive on the show. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Watching it. I say it all the time. I'm like, man. (laughs) Your focus was somewhere else during that time. Yes. But but now as an adult. (laughs) Now as an adult. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So the Kirsten storyline, let's start there because. Can I just say single white female much? Like that's the only thing going through my head as I'm watching this whole storyline with her and Charlotte. Do you feel me? Yeah. Well, I think they, yeah, they brought her on for that. That that was, they literally said, we want a desperate housewife, Nicolette Sheridan type character ah. on the show. In fact, I thought for some reason, it, I had to check this because I almost um, said, yeah, in fact, they offered it to her. She was on Desperate Housewives. They did not offer it to her. <laughs> so my she memory was, was totally occupied. incorrect. It was incorrect. But oh. do men revert to college days or bachelor days when, when, or at least these guys do in their house when, because Kirsten's gone and the house is just disgusting in the <laughs> opening scene? I was like, I don't, can you, could you do that same storyline nowadays? Like, I'm so helpless without a woman here. Uh. It, it felt very dated to me. Did it? Like, we can't do anything. Like, they're Neanderthals. I'm like, I'm, you're, you're full, like, grown-ups. I think you can, I think you can figure it out. Totally. But you know, it's interesting. I think that like, if you saw a woman needing a man, we're like, oh no, you could never do that today. But I feel like the man still needing the woman, you could still do. And Mm -hmm. like, it's not flagged. That's my personal opinion. Well, you know, you know what this, you know what this actually, this, this symptom is, you know, is the fact that, you know, we were discussing everything that was going on but this is a symptom of what's going on with Sandy and the boys notice. They're like, mm. oh, because he's, I mean, with everything that's going on, he misses his wife and he's just trying to maintain what's, you know, and 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 the house being in disarray is showing, I think, the audience what's going on inside of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Because he's, I mean, I didn't, it, it just kind of hit me that that, you know, they're might be s- what's going on. They're so cute together. They have such beautiful chemistry together. When he comes to visit her at the cabin, when he comes to the cabin and she runs into his arms, mm-hmm. it's yeah. so sweet and it's so pure. There's something really beautiful about it. Right, You right. know, I don't think you noticed these things or I certainly didn't at one, 24 when I was on this show because, you know, mm-hmm. very focused on me, my storyline. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've learned that, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really, really refreshing to look at it now and just be like, oh, that's a beautiful relationship that they're showing. Well, Rachel's often commented that she, as an adult, you do pay attention to the, the adult storylines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a, yeah, different, in a completely different way. Yeah. And, and from from fans to anybody who's talked to me about the show, th- they have a similar experience. When I was in high school, I sometimes would fast forward through, if yeah. I could, the adult storylines. They just didn't right. have that impact because they weren't relating to that. Yeah, you but, haven't lived it yet. Yeah, yeah. no, it doesn't right. have anything. Yeah, watching it as parents now and as adults, you're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, when when he does go to visit her and her bags are packed, you know, when when Charlotte says that, you know, she kind of scares her into the idea of going, yeah, uh, of right. going home. And you know what? Because I know that people do go to like cafe or sober living, but they're usually another version of some like um, some supervision. Yeah, so it's not. Right. It's, it's it's a normal thing to not necessarily go quite home yet, but. But this mm-hmm. was like, I, I thought it would have been interesting if when we meet Charlotte, that Kirsten and Charlotte had already formed a deep relationship in rehab. And that's right. why, and that everyone knew, you know, like, and, and then is, they... Is this the first episode where we meet Jerry Ryan then? Well, we met her in the last okay. one, but she, in the last one, she introduced herself and it's oh. and like, instead of, instead of actually showing that they already had a, I thought maybe if they'd had a longer relationship, it could have been a little bit more understandable. But but when she says, you know, she says that she's not going to come home, you know, he he accepts it. But I guess it's a it's a realistic thing, but it seems very painful, you yeah. know, and but she does have that. It is a very good reason that, you know, he takes it in stride and says, OK, you know, because if if her if her affliction is perfectionism and fear of failure and if she falls back into those, she's scared to fall back into those roles, that can make her relapse. That's, yeah. I guess, um, and and I guess that lands. Although all I kept thinking, and I said this in, la- in the last episode, that Sandy needs some treatment as well. He needs some therapy and they, like he needs- Like Al-Anon, you mean? Well, he, because fa- fa- yeah. a lot of times they include families in these situations. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't think they, he, she, he needs to- They to, need family uh, therapy. therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And maybe people weren't doing that at the time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't as popular. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Trendy. No, just kidding. But then, okay. So when they get to the new home, and I, this triggered something, I had talked to Ian Toynton yes. months ago, and I remember him telling me, first, first of all, I- um, I forgot to tell you that the Syri- the Syriac, where they actually shot the rehab center, I texted Ian yesterday and I said, you told me something about that, that rehab place. And he said, um, so he sent me this and he said, yes, I was so obsessed with finding a villa style hilltop location for the rehab that I overlooked the, wa- um, that he overlooked that he completely missed uh, that there's a small vineyard right inside the entrance of this <gasps> villa because it's actually somebody's home. Oh my gosh. And he said, and it was only pointed out to me on the first day of shooting and he had to spend valuable time shooting around it so that it wasn't on film, that it wouldn't exist. And he said, I dread to think what would have happened if it hadn't <laughs> been pointed out to me. And I'm oh a, my gosh. he goes, I'm a serious wine drinker. Maybe that was the problem. <laughs> 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 I, I thought that was so cute. And that's so, so funny. They just didn't even. Oh my gosh, that's that there's really a, funny. I mean, but can you imagine? This is in Westlake Village. This big villa Whoa. where where Syriac was, and there's actually a vineyard in the villa, or I, something like that. That's, wow, that's anyway. very funny. Yeah. He, people have a lot of money. <laughs> well, do you know where the the Arrowhead House was? That was a beautiful yes, house. That was in. Okay, so I screwed this. I added these two together. The the Arrowhead House was in Westlake Village, which has oh. a lake, a man-made a lake. lake. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And it was actually the, um, this is the original American Pie House. Ah, no there way. There was a little trivia on that. Thanks to these websites that um, some fans have made about all the locations on the OC I refer to. So <laughs> you can find anything out there. <laughs> but anyway, could you imagine like, oh, c- come to Syriac. But yes, but we're also going to make you stomp some grapes and make the wine. That's, that's our <laughs> that's our way of treating you. <laughs> Real torture. Whoa. That is funny. Good anyway. little tidbit. Yeah, yeah. little tidbit. <laughs> so yeah, but when they meet there, you know, when when Sandy comes to dinner, which by the way, I had to check this. I was like, how far is Lake Arrowhead? And a, it's only an hour and a half from yeah, Newport. Yeah, it's not too far. It's not that bad. No. Okay. It's I was close. Like, no, that's, re- that's reasonable, reasonable that he would go up there if he really misses her. I think it's reasonable. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's doable. Public Goods is the one-stop shop for sustainable, high-quality, everyday essentials made from clean ingredients at an affordable price. Everything from personal care and household products to coffee, toilet paper, shampoo, pet food, and more. Public Goods is your new everything store thoughtfully designed for the conscious consumer. Okay, so 
I've said that I'm a fan of the products. I mean, who wouldn't be? But I also have to say that they look nice. The products and the packaging, they, they just have this very nice, simple look. Everything looks clean and calming. There's no like bright colors and mismatched packaging. Public Goods searches the globe to find clean, healthy, eco-friendly, and innovative products. They ethically source and obsessively develop each of their products to be free of unhealthy ingredients and harmful additives still common on drug and grocery store shelves. They are committed to making their products healthy and safe for humans, animals, and the environment. I know I've said this before, but I get so excited when I see other people using Public Goods because I know what's in it. I know it's good for you and it looks really stylish. I was at an Airbnb and they had all public good stuff (laughs) and I gave it a five-star rating. Nice. We've worked out an awesome deal. Receive $15 off your first public goods order with no minimum purchase. That's right. They are so confident that you will absolutely love their products and come back again and again that they are giving you $15 to spend on your first purchase. You have nothing to lose. Just go to publicgoods.com slash the OC or use code the OC at checkout. That is P-U-B-L-I-C-G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash the O-C to receive $15 off your first order. Want a new credit card but not sure how to choose? Credit Karma can help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. They partner with a wide range of card issuers so you can be sure that you are exploring all sorts of options. Credit Karma helped me find a credit card uh, by comparing offers to other companies. It was a really great tool to have. It gave me confidence in what I was going to get and applying for the right card for my lifestyle, which sometimes I pretend is expensive, but it's not. I really, I really try to keep it in check. But (laughs) thankfully, Credit Karma set me in the right direction. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. It's 100% free and won't affect your credit scores while you research. I enrolled in their free credit monitoring, which is so useful for me to have as a reference when I'm thinking about a big purchase or just to monitor my credit. Ready to find the card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. That's creditkarma.com. We were just talking about the fact that Sandy is so clever. He figured out that Julia was bribing Trey um, with um, about the shooting. And so he walks up and sure enough, there's 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 a uh, single white female staring. <laughs> and she's like, he, he very reluctantly understands or agrees. So he's like, you left her unsupervised. You know, it's like, you would think that he'd have his, I think he has a spidey sense out there but he's not going to push it. I don't know. What was your reaction to that whole? So wait, to which part? Say that so, one more so time. So he shows up for dinner and she walks up. Um, oh, when he's, what he's picking up on there? Yeah. yeah what well, was interesting to me that he said there, well, she might, you might not ever come home. I, isn't that where he says it? When they're just, she's like, I think I'm staying here. I'm not going to come home. Or is that when, when he's no, visiting her? No, that's at the rehab, I think. Oh, that's at the rehab that's center. Rehab. I felt like that was a leap. I was like, you're never, you're coming. never coming. You're going from like, I need a little bit ah. of space to you're never coming home. I'm like, that's, that's kind of a big. And I guess maybe it shows his fear. Well, but Mindy, when you said he's like left her unattended, it's a joke because she's in the kitchen cooking. Oh, that part. Uh, you left her unsupervised. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, that was like a joke. Like, she, she can't, can't cook, cook in the kitchen. Oh. He wasn't serious. Like, you left her unsupervised, she's going to drink. He was making a joke. Oh, that she's in the kitchen good one. Unsupervised. Thanks. Thanks, Bilson. <laughs> no problem. Here for you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so Jerry Ryan is very creepy. I don't know what's going to happen. Literally, I'm like, I really don't know what's going to happen. But that scene with her down by the water, crying, you know, coaxing Kirsten out there. She's great she in pretends. that, by the way. Like when you when you come across her and she's really like in her feelings, I was like, yeah, that's amazing. Good job. But she pulls out this yeah. bottle of some oh, and um, then she gets all brown evil. liquid liquid, and Kelly just does this look like. <laughs> Yeah, hey, there it is. Like she's like, oh, and she goes, I haven't yet, but I might. And then there was a part that was a little bit, as Logan Marshall said, kind of mustache, mustache twirling. twirling. Yes. She goes, she pulls out her flask. <laughs> and it's so great. And she does it really quick too. Like Kirsten's barely out of there and she's like, ha ha. Whatever. Ha-ha. Glug, glug, glug. I just, <laughs> so, so soapy and delicious. I, you know. <laughs> When I started watching these two episodes, the first and second one, because I don't remember stuff as well, yeah. I was laughing out loud just doing that bah, ha, ha, thing. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. just like, 
I don't know. I just get a kick out of the melodrama. I know. I love. I love this the season. It's fun. But let's go back. Let's let's go on to the senior year of what's yeah. going on with Marissa and Ryan. Yes, they are on the verge of expulsion from school. Right in the teaser. In the teaser, after we see that um, dirty, messy, terrible kitchen. There's a um, doorbell ring, which, by the way, I think this is the first time you ever see Julie in a teaser. I don't know. I could be wrong. Audience, if I'm wrong, you can tell me. But um, but the fact that the last thing we knew and that Ju- that Ju- he found out is that he, Julie, basically had Ryan arrested because she made Trey confess to something that wasn't true. And he, mm-hmm. she opens the door and Sandy's just like, how... How dare you even show oh, your yeah. face here? And she goes, right. whatever. We have b- bigger f- fish to fry. And I was just doing what any other parent would. No, Julie, <laughs> any other parent wouldn't do what you just did. She, the balls on this woman. They're, they're amazing. I love it. Yeah. And then that's when they introduce that uh, Dr. Kim, played by Rosalind Chow, tells them that the board wants to bring in a specialist in school safety. And here is where we meet Eric Mabius, a.k.a. Dean. Yes. Yes. He's very extreme, this Dean. <laughs> he really is. He's like, I'm not here to make anyone happy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you, there's that. That's uh, you've just kind of explained exactly what the character is. It entered that villain. It's, yeah, exactly. It's very, I mean, Taylor's kind of the same way when we see her too. It's very like, this is who she is and this is how they're going right. to play. Right. Um, you had a, you have a lot to do with him coming up. We won't jump ahead like that, but it's, um, how is it working with him? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> So, so so funny. I just ran into him at like a at like a Hallmark thing. So I've seen like adult adult version of him. But at the time, like it's this is terrible. I don't have. There's so many memories that I just don't have of this mm-hmm. of this period of time. Um, I remember I remember liking to work with him in the same way as like fellow fellow actor. I don't I don't remember. I didn't even know he was in this episode. Like <laughs> I don't I don't remember anything about our scenes together. Like right. nothing. But clearly we you know become this sort of duo of of uh this is how the school runs and we're going right. to run it yeah. and we're both in these right. you know like 80s preppy sort of things with his stripy tie and my sweaters over my shoulder <laughs> well i mean i yeah there's uh we'll we'll get to that but yeah. but you know it's not it is very realistic that in a private school setting that what some kids do outside of school can get them kicked out. I knew kids that had some drug charges and they went to a private Christian school and they got kicked out of school and the public school kids did not. I mean, if you did things at Notre Dame, Rachel, that were outside, you definitely could be in danger of, I think there's a code of conduct that kids sign. So, because at first I was like, why do you want to kick them out? I think we did a lot of things. We just never got caught. (laughs) Right. No. So you get caught. And I think um, my daughter went to Notre Dame as well. And you hear things about some kids who do things. And they definitely, if there's a code of conduct at a private school, it's it's very realistic that Marissa and Ryan, there might be a petition and they're going to examine it to kick them out. Because at first I was like, well, you know, of course you want people to understand the circumstances and give them a break. But I, I find this to be realistic. You have like my favorite line in this episode. Do you remember what it is when you're... So you so basically, you know, they're saying that they're going to expel Marissa and keep Ryan. But uh, then yeah. you have this whole plan, you know, to pay to keep her in. What is that line? Do you know what I'm well, talking about? about? Well, the first line that she says, come on, Dr. Kim, you know my, you know my um, daughter, pretty, where Chanel, not exactly gangsta. Which is the fun, which is which is very funny, but then no, it's something about they donated like a pool and a field. Oh, and yes. oh so she says she comes up with the with the idea after Pilates and cardio bar. No, whatever she goes, I do all my best thinking at cardio bar. She's like, I know a big fat donation, and Jimmy of course has money problems, and he's like, so what, like uh, two, three thousand? She's like, uh, no, like a hundred. The Seinfeld or the sign whatever. The Seinfelds only um, donated like a, a field and their son only smoked pot or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, we have to give uh, them at least At least 100,000. You're so, your delivery on that <laughs> is so, and then you exit into the closet. It's, it's so, so good. good. We had fun. Yeah, that, that, that was fun. That was one of my favorite moments in this episode. One of the favorite moments. So they're trying to get Marissa back in. Ryan goes to the school with her and they talk to the dean and he is such an asshole. <laughs> like really, truly. 
I mean, well, it was so naive of, you know, I thought it was, you know, when Ryan's like goes up to Dr. Kim and he's like, come on, can't, can't we just explain? And she's like, they know, they know. And then when he actually shows up and this guy is like, oh, the infamous, I'm the guy who's, I'm the bad guy and I'm going to, and, and he's, he basically says, oh yeah. She, she says, yeah, I did all those things when he lists everything. I did all those things, but the shooting was different. And he's like, how? But this is exactly what Julie was saying to her in the past. She's like, do you know what you've done? You shot someone and this, this, is, this messes with you. And she's like, no, I, I saved my boyfriend. Aww, and now, she's, right. now Julie's right. Look what's happening. And then he says, you shot someone and I don't hear, hear any remorse. And she stands up. And this is Marissa's Julie Cooper moment. <laughs> she sounds just like Julie. And she's like, because I don't have any. And I was like, there's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> There's my girl getting herself definitely kicked out of school. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. And then later on, when Jimmy's like gives, gives her the hundred thousand, and she's like, "Yeah, well, we're not going to need it." She's not upset. She's like, apparently, she showed the dean a side of her that she usually reserves for me. So on to yeah. the next. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, yep, and there goes that money. Yeah. Hey. To pay for the oh, landscapers. Well. Oh, I was so stressed for Jimmy this whole Me episode. Too. Right? Very, yeah, it's yes. very stressful. You just want him to like stand up and speak the truth and stop all these lies. Well, because because we've been Jimmy. kind of you know because Sandy said to him in the last episode, he's like, he's like, first of all, what your what what your ex wife is doing, but then what are you doing here? And mm -hmm. he's questioning his motives, and sh and sure enough, now the audience sees he's got a friend in town from Hawaii that apparently Jimmy took the deposit on a boat and s screwed it away on some stock options. So is this guy a loan shark or is he just a guy who lost money on a boat with Jimmy? He's implying that he knows some shady people that could come after Jimmy. Right. I don't know. <laughs> We're like, I don't know. I don't know. What? <laughs> anyway. I don't know either. But in, in any case, he's now, now the audience knows that he's desperate for money. Yeah. And he's... Uh -huh. so well, at it again. So Ju when Julie says she needs 100000 he goes back to the guy and asks for more money. And, but he hasn't learned anything. I mean, obviously now we're learning that he, he screwed away all the money he got from the lighthouse. The same thing. People don't change. Same patterns. Everything. But yeah. Oh, Jimmy. We feel for Jimmy. I know. Because, I, I mean, we, we, we love Tate. So sweet. And we had so much fun working yeah. together. So yeah. it would have been nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, Marissa's definitely expelled, right? So let's talk a little bit about entering Taylor Townsend into the mix. You, your character, has been vying for social chair. Yeah, that's... A apparently a position. Well, but wait, before they were kicked out, you guys all went to school that first day. Right, but we're just talking, right, generally. So I'm just... Oh. We wait. We went to school that first day, right? Marissa Before was there. Before they get kicked out, yeah. Taylor's like trying to take over Marissa's position because you think she's she's a goner, which she winds up being, but she's there that first day. Literally, Autumn, with that first like, oh, I didn't think you were going to be here because of the whole and your oh gun God. thing with your hand, your impression <laughs> of a gun thing oh. ah, was, was like, I guarantee you the writers and then the whole scene I guarantee you, in those two scenes, the writers are like, oh, we love this character because this is what happens on television. I can't wait to write for this character more. And they would mm -hmm. kept, yeah. kept giving you stuff and kept giving you yeah. stuff and kept giving you stuff. Yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> it would be so hard to have somebody like this in your life. She's so intense, Taylor Townsend. <laughs> it's so... When you... This is funny, Rachel. When it was in the script where you say, there's nothing I hate more than perky blondes with who are like out to rule the world, something like that. I had to dye my hair for this character because I was a brunette. I was fully brunette. And so we had no to, way. yeah, I had to go and get highlights the whole time I was, I think maybe by season two, I didn't. But um, I just remember that being like a thing. I think the show did, I think the show did it for me because it was, it was yeah. expensive. Yeah. yeah, I, think, yeah, yeah. I always I think thought that. of you as brown or auburn. Yeah, I think it was just for this first episode because I was only supposed to be in this for like four episodes. So they were like... No way. Yeah, you're gonna, you know, I think that was like, well, we have to make you a blonde. It wasn't, they weren't adjusting to to me. At that point, I'm adjusting to it right. when you come as a guest star, right? You're there to serve the existing show. And so 
Yeah, so I had to dye my hair for that. I remember that. That is kind of a, um, that is a stereotype. And what a great line from Summer. I can't stand perky blondes who want to take over the world because I literally, <laughs> there's so many that pop into my head that I see on, <laughs> on, on social media. And it, it is, it's a, it is a social type or social type. That is uh, so, yeah. Stereotype? Yeah. Stereotype. That's so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Stereotype. But my yeah. favorite, one of my favorite things in this episode is our dynamic. Yeah. Autumn, like Summer versus Taylor is very funny. <laughs> yeah. You're, you have this cute little line where I say something like, do you want to be social chair? And you go, maybe. And it's the cutest, <laughs> yeah. the cutest little thing. I yeah. I just, I love you in this, Rachel. Your your delivery is always, it's so fresh. It's so, <sighs> it's never expected mm-hmm. what you're doing. Aww, it's, and it's really authentic. I think that's what this show <laughs> lent itself to because we were ta- we've kind of explored that when, you know, sometimes in the beginning of a show, you come in and you try something and then you start bringing in your own personal quirkies, yeah. quirkiness. Yeah. And Rachel, I think you, more than anybody on the show, I feel like you did a lot of those yeah. brilliantly. Because I as watching the show, I'm always like, she that delivery was so like, or just it's it's so Rachel and so yes. unique yes. to her and Aww. not not anybody else. Yeah. There wasn't a stereotype at all. Yeah. And I think that Thanks. was you. I think Summer was that because originally we learned she was described as blonde, tall volleyball player or something like that. Oh my and, gosh! And, and it was Rachel. <laughs> definitely the it opposite. Was Rachel Bilson. But oh, the oh, other that is very sweet. But the other thing that in the the other scene when she comes in and and she's trying to take over, all I was thinking is that what we learn and it wasn't all there, but I think we can talk about it now is that Summer was prom queen. Summer is. When when Seth says fight fire with fire, she's popular. Yeah. She's style. She's and what we learned about Taylor is she's compensating for not being popular and yeah. not being on the in crowd yeah. and kind of pushing. So there was a part of me at the whole end of this that I was like, Summer won out because of her popularity. Like when you guys are at the when when Seth yeah. says fight fire with fire and you come up with these ideas. Mini burgers. Mini burger, And the, gr- yeah. the, the girls are all like, ooh, ah. <laughs> A chocolate fountain. I know. Ah. And they were it's like. It's so exaggerated. It's so <laughs> funny. It's, and they just immediately go on to it. And I'm like, aren't you're at the carnival, carnival right now. I'm pretty sure you've already made all these <laughs> decisions. But they're going to throw them all out. And do this. But also, know, Summer, Summer's thinking. a nicer person than Taylor Townsend at this point in the storyline, <laughs> too. Well, I think, yeah, yeah, when you're a teenager who, I think I think we figure out ways to, if you've been, if you're bullied or if you're not quite liked or some kids either yeah. cower or try to hide or they come up with some other kind of, I mean, all of these things, of course, I'm, I'm talking about because I know Taylor later on yeah. in the series and what we get to know about her. But yeah. but she's such an interesting character. They do some fun stuff with you in season four. Oh my gosh. But what about Adam? <laughs> what about Adam like giving her the finger? Oh, oh my God. I thought the same thing. How did he get away with that? Right? <gasps> but I guess you could do that. Can you? I, I mean, I, I guess it, it I guess, did. I guess so. It wasn't it was so funny. It was like, Definitely yeah. an Adam <laughs> improv. <laughs> yeah, no, you made some great acting choices. You mentioned it before, you know, when you when they're like, you you need to leave the podium and that very slow, I'm going to pack up this passive aggressive, pack up my stuff so slowly, write something really was do you remember making that choice? I don't remember making that director? choice at all. I'm I don't I have no memory of it, but I'm I enjoyed it watching it this time. <laughs> whether whoever it came from. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's so interesting? So by the end of this at the carnival, because, you know, Ryan and Marissa show up and they're not supposed to be there, you obviously tattletale and yeah. find the dean and tell yeah. him. So by the end, you're like, you hate Taylor yes. and the dean. Like, you guys are the new villains, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. so interesting how they start characters a certain way because your first takeaway of Taylor is like, oh, no, like, this character sucks. Like, she told yeah. on them. Like, that's not cool, you know? And, like, I was mad at, at the character, like, watching the episode. I was like, dude, that's so shitty. <laughs> and, like, getting so wrapped up in it. But it's so interesting how characters can pivot. Yeah, I mean, she, she comes in to serve that one function. And then I remember, I think it's maybe, like, three episodes later, four episodes later, when they give me, they gave me a backstory. 
And mm-hmm. I don't know if that was the pivot in the writer's room where they decided to keep her for longer. But I remember that episode and I was like, oh, I think I'm going to I, I think I might be here longer than I thought because they <laughs> added dimensionality to her mm-hmm. and they gave her a reason for why she was so difficult and so horrible and so controlling because right. of the trauma that she's experiencing at the hands of her mother, which we'll get to eventually. But I was, you know, at, at this point, she's fairly, especially in my opinion, in the carnival scene, two-dimensional. Like, I'm just watching the look on my face and I'm like, oh my God, I'm just chewing scenery here. Like, I'm just, <sighs> it's a lot. But, but It's a lot. But you, I mean... It's not just us talking about this here. I think even we interviewed Alan Sepinwall, the TV critic from Rolling Stone. I think he even talked about Taylor. I mean, there's this character is one of the favorite characters of the entire mm. and such an uh, such a welcome addition to the show and gave it so much. I've said this before, when writers and television are inspired by what the actors do, that's our job. Yes yeah. to come. So, we can play it safe and I could know my lines. But if you take some risks and you take some, make some choices yeah. and commit and prepare and that's yeah. what you did. Mm-hmm. You know, Thank you. Forms. They started giving you all kinds of languages and stuff, which yes. I find really challenging to do. That was so much fun for me. You I, got, you I knew love, Korean and yeah, I love accents and languages. And that was <laughs> I mean, I think you know, by season four, there was there was a bunch of little things that were unique to me that sort of got worked into the storyline, or at least that they threw at me and hoped I could handle it. And hopefully I did. I, I it was fun. Every time they gave me something I knew to do. It's yummy. And I think that's the thing is in, you've got to, I think sometimes as actors, sometimes we look at like, oh my gosh, look at all the dialogue they gave me. This this is so hard. There have been times where being a mom, flying, yeah. traveling, mm-hmm. and now I've got to learn all this dialogue. Or you put a negative, yeah. negative feeling on what I've got to do as opposed to, as opposed to what I get to do. Yeah. It's a right. really good thing to to kind of change that attitude. Of. Yeah, I always I always felt that. I was always yeah. uh, just super excited anytime that they would give me anything. <laughs> I, I, but I wasn't tired yet. I hadn't been doing the series for two years <laughs> right. at that point. Oh, yeah. I, I absolutely loved everything about this, this character, Julie. There was nothing too surprising for me. Now, your character, Taylor Townsend, is such a fun character. And like watching it, I'm like, if I could go back, I'd want to do that. <laughs> just like because you do it so well and I'm like that just looks so fun but you make it you look so easy because you were just so amazing as that character and you're an amazing actress so we were very so fortunate sweet. to have you as her um, and I can't wait to watch the rest of the episodes because I know you and I have so much stuff together I can't yeah. I know I can't wait I have little <laughs> memories of this of this whole show and a lot of them are with you Rachel yeah <laughs> yeah I can't wait well you know the last thing that's um I wanted to point out was, um, you know, there's this really important scene because of what's been going on with Ryan and Marissa, you know, the the aftermath of Trey and are we going to get through this? And we keep implying, I think there's some foreshadowing, you know, that he can't get her back. They didn't get her back into school. And there's this really great scene with them where she's upset and understandably so. And she's, she's just like, stop helping me. Stop saving me. Stop helping me. It is what it is. And he was, and instead of going, oh gosh, I'm sorry. And he turned, he turns and he goes like, so what? This is my fault now? You know, like they right. get into like trying to one up each other. Yeah. And my brother's gone. And, and, you know, it's where all of a sudden I was like, okay, therapy again. This is when they need <laughs> to be able to talk it out. Mindy's whole campaign is that everyone needed therapy desperately. True. Right. <laughs> and these, yeah, I agree. After all of this. Because all of these things just keep piling up. I mean, but I'm I'm also foreshadowing the end of this season too. I mean, it just keeps yeah. going and going and going. But but you know, then when they make up and they go to the carnival, which I thought was really sweet, and then we talked about Dean showing. But you know, of co- how dare he put his hands on her? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was a really hard grab. Like absolutely inappropriate and not okay. And, and it, I mean, it's off school. Like, it's, it is. I mean, there's plenty of other people that were there that don't go to the school. The whole point of a carnival is that the public usually is invited. So, so Ryan's, so does Ryan get kicked out of school too? No. And they, do they, yeah. not even after that? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, is that future? I, okay. Do you I'll know what, guys? On. I, 
I do remember some things, but I don't know exactly the, how things have. Well, <laughs> so I don't, I don't remember any of this. We'll watch the next one and we'll, we'll get find to out. next week. We'll find out. But I do, there's a few comments, but he grabs him, of course, Ryan back to Ryan, punches him, and he flat out says, the dean says, I thought I was going to have to work hard to get you kicked mm. out. Like he had a hard on for getting him kicked out already, which is just, mm-hmm. you know, of course, now that's there, there's that villain. And as they walk away, and Misha's just such a great crier. As they yeah. walk away, and she stares back, and the whole carnival staring at her, and and Ben looks hot in his leather jacket, <laughs> and his haircut is great. His haircut. I couldn't help, but I was like, oh my gosh, for never was there a story of more woe than this Juliet and her Romeo. Yeah. And I, I went back to what Stephanie always said. This is... This is a fairy tale. She is the princess. He is the prince. And it just sounded... And also because... And Brody's the jester. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of, you know... And all, it was kind of motivated because Sandy said, oh, one Montague and one Capulet before they go to talk to Dr. Kim about Aww. Julian and Sandy. It is, it is really that. And you really get that when they're just the two of them together on screen too. And they're both so gorgeous and they're yeah. gazing into each other's eyes and Misha's got tears in her eyes. And Ugh. it's just, I mean, I, I, I was like, this is why people love this show. It's this, this pull that you get towards them and that, that tragedy that you just sense is underneath everything. Yeah, he puts his arm around her and they walk away. You're like, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think it's also like Ryan, he's like, I would, he probably, I would rather it be this way. The two of us out yeah, together. Right. Yeah. We have some voicemails, some fan questions for you. What? People called in. Yes. We would love yes. to play them for yes. you. Oh my gosh. How fun. Hi, Rachel, Melinda, and Autumn. I'm Sasha from Australia. I just wanted to say The OC is my absolute favorite show. And I started watching when it aired and I was 11 years old. I've got a question for all of you. Were you a teacher's pet in high school, just like Taylor? I love you girls. Thank you so much for doing this podcast. Mwah. Oh, Thank you sweet. for the question. Thank you for yeah. the question. What were you like in high school? Um, yeah, I was a high achiever in high school. Yeah, I wasn't. I was not. <laughs> Shocker. I was, yeah, I know. Not so, <laughs> not, I, I had a lot to draw from for, for Taylor. You know, I was like, uh, secretary of the French club and on homecoming court and an honor student and just really like checked all the high school boxes and I'm sure annoyed the crap out of people. Really? Um, but yeah, I, I went, I went full force into high school. I did not rebel. I did the, the opposite of like, let me see if I can master this, which is what I related to with Taylor. How about you? No. <laughs> 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 no, no. I, I, all I can remember in sixth grade, um, I was nicknamed Mindy Mouth. <laughs> Shocker. Seriously. <laughs> Mrs. Ball was her name. But no, I was... Wait, you were nicknamed that by a teacher? Yes. <gasps> she called me Mindy Mouth. Mindy Mouth. Because you, you were so chatty? Yeah. yeah. Now, now look what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> See, it worked out. <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was so determined. All I wanted to do was theater. I wanted to do musical theater. And I was so determined. I went to private school and in high school... All I wanted to do is take acting classes and get to my career. Wow. Like I was determined. My dad was like, you have to be 18. Basically because he, uh, you know. He, me too. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And he was like, yeah, no. So I, I was 18. more, I wasn't. So I was taking singing lessons and doing oh, theater wow. and theater, musical theater camps and such. But I wanted, I was like, yeah, just give me the easy class. Like after taking the AP classes, I stopped. I was like, no, nah, I want to just. So I went yeah. straight to work after one year of college. And where did you grow up? In Dana Point. Oh, Cal- yeah, we're Dana- SoCal. Oh my gosh. My brother's in Carlsbad. Oh wow. Yeah, so we're we're natives. Neighbors. And you're a native. Oh my god, Whoa. we have three natives here. And then uh, Adam, Adam was from San Diego too. We were well cast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. yeah. And Mar- Marguerite was from Riverside and went to high school in Newport, we found out. No yeah. way. She I went to like, Harbor. Here I am going, I grew up in Orange County. I grew up in Orange County. I say that a lot. <laughs> but everyone actually... <laughs> Autumn's like, it. what is happening here? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just getting, getting used to it. <laughs> Rachel, what right. were you like in high school? I was probably more like I was from Chino. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I partied a little hard. I don't, I, I, 
It was both. It was a mixture. It started out kind of like, you know, wrong side of the tracks. And then I got my act together when I took my theater in high school. Um, seriously, like I started focusing on that. And that was fun. Yeah. Let's hear the next voicemail. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Melinda. My name is Tyler. I'm from Hermosa Beach, California, which oh, I'm right sure on. you both know that's predominantly where the entire OC series was filmed. <laughs> Unbeknownst to a lot of fans, that's not located in Orange County, but rather LA. And fun fact about me, I went to high school at Maricosta, which is where they filmed a good amount of season three and four. It was uh, Marissa's ghetto school, Newport <laughs> Union. <laughs> I've always been the same age as the characters, too. So going through high school at the same age and the same amount of teenage angst, I've always felt really bonded to the show. Um. And if you met me, I'm a non-Jewish embodiment of Seth Cohen. With the same <laughs> I love it. My question is for Autumn Reeser, whose portrayal of Taylor Townsend was so well done. Her character arc from the start of season three to the end of season four was among the most drastic of any character on the show. So it's a huge testament to how she's able to act. So I've always wondered, how was she able to progress her character to become more and more likable after starting from such an annoying foil to the core four to being a real complex yeah. recurring main character, especially when she stepped into a, a more important role in season four? Thank you for your question and your compliments. Mm -hmm. How sweet. Also, you have a great voice. She's a great speaking voice. Mm -hmm. um, from Taylor to Tyler. Tyler, Taylor. Um, I had that. I, um, I'm equally surprised by that. It was an equally surprising um, two years in my life. I did not expect it to go in the direction that it did. And I think um, the, the thing that I would say is I, I always um, show up 100% in whatever, whatever role I'm given, whatever show I'm on, I, I give the same amount. Um, and so I'm always looking for what else I can add. It's those little moments of like, let me do this or let me just put in this little this little twist here. And um, and so I did that regardless of what the writers threw at me. And I was really, really um, blessed and lucky and grateful that they really started um, expanding my character and writing for me because this show changed my life 100%. And it was exhilarating and terrifying and... Um, when I was able to just focus on what I do, which is storytell, it was just fun and um, no problem. But the way the 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 impact it had on my life was was um, the the more emotional roller coaster part of it. Yeah, it's it's you make a good point. It, tiny, small, little choices. Yeah the writers see or the producers see and they go, oh, that's so cool. I'm going to, that inspires me to do this or that. I, I mean, yeah. if, 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 I don't know about you, but you don't play a villain as a villain. You just play a person as a person. Yes. Yeah. And we're, because villains don't think of themselves no. as villains. We're all heroes in our own story. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the, so when the writers start giving you these vulnerable scenes, the writing allows you to become more complex. Yeah, and it allows the audience to understand you. I mean, this is this is how we understand each other as humans, right? When you can get into the why of why are, is this person showing up in this way, then you can start to have compassion for them and then you can start to be interested and let them into your heart because you, you can relate. You're like, oh yeah, I do this one thing because I'm wounded in that way. Okay. So yeah, it's a complete thank you to the writers for, for being willing to take her in that direction. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Melinda love the podcast and thank you so much for putting this together my question for taylor is do you really speak that many languages <laughs> thanks bye i do not speak that many languages but i love accents and i love when i get to do languages and i did at the time speak french much better than i do right now not fluently but it was not um outside of my wheelhouse at the time which may be why they put it in that's awesome. I can really? find French so hard. Yeah, I was. So stu hard. I studied it in high school and was really into it for a while. Really into it. Okay, yeah. but yeah. you lost it. I don't think I could do it now. I mean, I think if you if you dropped like any language you learn, if you drop if you go to the country for a month, I think you'd it would come back. Yeah. But, but if you don't have reason, languages just to communicate, right? If you don't have a reason to use it to communicate, you lose it. We should find, yeah, well, we will find that out before we get to your French storyline <laughs> that if they, if did they come to you possibly and say, do you speak French? We're giving you a lot of French. I wonder if they did. I'm so curious too. That's such a great question. Yeah. Because you, you had a lot. 
I don't even remember. I do remember being on a French talk show at one point in this. Peaches. This, do you remember, remember a peaches? season for Peaches? Uh-huh. I remember this because sometimes people will comment on that on <laughs> online things. There are things I can't forget because it will show up in like Instagram <laughs> comments. Oh, my oh God. how funny. Well, we have questions for Schwartz. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was our last question. Thank you guys so much. And oh my gosh, thank you so much for this being here. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. Thank you thank you for starting this podcast so we can go back and revisit this time in our lives. It's really, really special to get to do this. Thank you. Yeah, I know. we feel yeah. the same way. We're like, this is so cool, you know? Yeah. And next time I definitely need to be in person yes, so I can please. hug you. Yes, <laughs> Yes. Right. <laughs> I and, love that. And if there is an, ep- because you are technically, from this point on, you are on the show. So you'll yeah. let us know. Yeah. Since you're going to go home now and, and binge the whole thing, <laughs> yeah, you're going totally. <laughs> to which you're, one I want to come back. You're going to let us know which one's important <laughs> to you. That's okay? a that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to come back. This is really fun. Right. Aww. Right. Well, yeah. I yeah. Well, I mean, I I can actually just off the top of my head think of a couple, but I'll let you. <laughs> but but I won't control it that bad that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Autumn. Yeah, so um, good to see you too. Yeah, I Yay. know. Yeah. You too. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like to watch us and see these pretty faces, check it out on YouTube. Bye, Bye. Bye. bitches. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.